Well, you have been around the industry since the beginning, re releasing your first CD, The Night Owl, in 1986, and then you also played on one of the most influential CDs of the smooth, ja ja smooth jazz genre, the Rippington's classic Moonlighting in 1987. Did you realize you were making history at the time? Well, I don't think so. Although, you know, I knew Kenny G was obviously almost giant. His Songbird, his Duo Tones record had not come out yet. It came out another year, uh, right around the next, the next year. And ironically, he had broken his arm the year before, so he wasn't doing much, he wasn't playing. And he came to see my band at um, Bon Appetit, a little club, and uh, we talked, and then it all sort of started to evolve that when he got his arm back into shape, he was freelancing around, and Russ called him to play at the Baked Potato. We had a, a Monday night gig. This is before the Rippingtons. It was called the Russ Freeman Group. And uh, there was kind of a rotating sax chair, and uh, Dave Koz would play occasionally, and Gary Meek would play occasionally. And Brandon Fields, of course, who became the regular guy. So Russ had his first solo record out, which was called Nocturnal Playground, which he did in his bedroom on an 8-track. And uh, he started to do new music because he got an offer from a Japanese label to do a project. And I went over to his house, and he was still recording on the 8-track. And uh, he said, yeah, I want to get some real instruments on this. He had the drum machine. And I said, yeah, really, I suggested that he get to a bigger studio and record the, the real live drums and real instruments. And so luckily he took my suggestion and went into the studio. And before we knew it, he was calling in David Benoit to play some piano. And uh, he needed someone to actually play the melody parts. His signature sound was a synth guitar synth sound. But because he was under contract to another label, he couldn't do that without it being an obvious conflict that he was going on and doing his thing. So that's one of the main reasons it wasn't called a Russ Freeman project. He had to think of a name. And that's the reason he called in Dave Kaz to play electric wind instrument. And uh, Dave had been playing in my group, so that's how the connection was made. So the record came out really well, and it came out in Japan, and he chopped it around a little bit in the United States and got a deal. But he couldn't call it Russ Freeman, so he had to think of a name, so he came up with the Rippingtons. And the rest is history from there. There's not much more I can say other than great songs, great airplay. They and, still play it on the radio today. And I still it launched hear, all these careers. Yeah. David Benoit. Well, David was already well. very successful. Um, he had, but it really it yeah. cemented him as well as Dave Cause. Yeah, certainly, you, yeah. Yeah. Um, Russ, Kenny G, all yeah. of you. Yeah, and coincidentally, that was the same year that I put out my first record, which I did in my living room, <laughs> <laughs> mostly drum machine, but I had you know some real percussion and real sax, of course, and real guitar. Um, you are a producer in your own studio. We're sitting in it right now. Um, Night Owl. You call your studio Night Owl. Please tell us about your studio. Night Owl has always been my nickname since even before I did my first project. And, uh, you know, playing the club scene in Washington, D.C., where we would play four or five nights a week sometimes, it became a nightly hang to go out for breakfast. And that, you know, that lifestyle is sort of the jazz lifestyle. Now, it's not as much of a jazz lifestyle, but still, I find that the best ideas come late at night when I come out here into the studio. Everybody's in bed, and I just go to the piano, and I just start playing ideas, and I get a lot of work done at night. Um, do you have any interesting production projects lately? Well, yes, I'm working on a project with uh, another pianist who we're co-writing all the songs, and his name is Omar. And this is our third or fourth project together. He's sort of in the world New Age field. And uh, 
yeah, we're in the midst of finishing off writing the songs and, uh, you know, there's going to be another one of these. Uh, he's on Real Music label, which is a very established New Age label. And it's coming out nicely. You also produce a lot of music for TV and the movie industry and now musicals. Cheers was a very prominent show. Any other shows you're working on? Well, lately the TV aspect of my career has sort of gone by the wayside. There was a composer named Craig Saffin that I did a lot of work with. I was sort of his right-hand man, synth programmer, engineer, you name it. And uh, he is sort of branched out from TV film into Broadway musicals. So he has about three different musicals in various stages of development. And we actually produce all the songs in the studio with top-notch singers and uh, produce it as if it's a cast album before it even gets to the reading stage, when then it gets to the tryout stage. It's a very long process getting a musical off the ground. So he's working on that. He splits his time between New York and Los Angeles.